like you already know how to breathe, but if you go to a yoga teacher or a meditation instructor, they can help you learn how to breathe more effectively and how you posture and you know the different types of circular breathing. Creativity is exactly the same way. So you might think, okay, that's great, but I don't even know the first thing about being creative. Um, and why is creativity so great anyway? Well, aside from many of the benefits of being creative, including an increased mood, do the things that you do, which can help you build a better world with better patient care, it can also give you a happier workplace because well, we all deserve a happy place to work and job satisfaction and resilience. So the thing is, if you don't know how to start being creative, I'm gonna help show you. And all you need to do is dance. And you can actually dance. Let's dance with me, let's see if this works. And I can't see any of you, you can see me. So you can dance like nobody's watching. Because being dancing is actually very creative. So if you don't know what to do, you can just start dancing. And I think the patients would appreciate it too. So I'm not a great dancer either, so. Um, but I love to do it. And that's the other thing, if I didn't mention, is you don't even have to be good at the creative thing you choose to get the benefits. So I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, I was, you know, I'm dancing in front of however many hundreds of people, and you can't, you, I can't see you, but you can see me. And, uh, but hey, who cares? The worst thing is you thought that I'm a bad chair dancer, whatever. J.K. Rowling, if you don't know the story, J.K. Rowling was stuck on a train. She had no smartphone, she had no book. She was a, a single mom on welfare. So she stared out the window when the train broke down for five hours. That's where she imagined the whole story arc of the Harry Potter series. Now, it took many, many years and decades of painstaking editing and rewriting to build that amazing series of books. But it started because she wasn't on her phone. She was daydreaming. She was letting her mind wander. Go Gryffindor. Yay. I don't know. I might be more of a Hufflepuff. It's a good question. So when we think about creativity, resilience, and ambiguity tolerance, they're all so deeply connected. If we can use our creativity to be more aware of how we feel in uncertainty, if we can face that uncertainty more and more, where the stakes are pretty low, like in a painting or making a meal, well, maybe those stakes aren't low, given my hot dog experience. But if we can face uncertainty with that, we can build a virtual universe of data points, of experiences, so that when you're daydreaming, your brain can access those experiences and build a bridge from, say, Icarus, which is the farthest known star to Earth. If you stay in your comfort zone, you order the same latte all the time, although I'd be that guilty, um, you go to the same places all the time, you do the same things, you have the same circle of friends who are in your same um, cultural and economic group. Maybe you can build a bridge from like Edmonton to Calgary. Maybe it's going to be a bullet train. But the more diverse experiences you can collect, the more you're able to tap into that creativity. And you can do this intentionally. So when I was at the Met before COVID a few years ago, there was an exhibit on camp. I actually didn't even know what it was. Um, if you don't know, camp is this um, kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a fashion term, it's kind of fashion term, but it's basically a culture around um, flamboyant dress, like think Lady Gaga, Elton John, and just uh, a very different type of outgoing culture. And I didn't really, it wasn't really that interesting to me. You know, it just wasn't. But I went, and that's exactly why I went, because I was like, eh, I don't know, I don't know anything about camp, why would I like it? And it was weird, it was crazy, and I loved it. It was this like peas and carrots dress and this like, I don't know, like loofah dress for the shower with butterflies on it. But the idea of loosening your inhibitions and thinking like what if and outside the box thinking for that cliche term, you should never do it at the same time as you're editing, which is more of a convergent thinking, which is a detail oriented finding one solution. So I wanna do a quick exercise. Um, uh, on convergent creativity. So this is the creativity where there's a correct answer. And then lots of different ideas. And the funny thing is when we do this exercise, and if you wanted to do it uh, at home or at work, the longer you do it, the more creative the ideas get. Because we start at the beginning, we don't wanna say something stupid, or we don't wanna say something that doesn't make sense. But when someone says something like, use it for a pizza oven, you might think, oh, you could use it to like keep yourself warm in your sleeping bag. 
And oh, that person might think, oh, in my sleeping bag in a tent, I could use it as a pulley, a counter pulley to hold my bag up for the bear pole or something. So um, all, all kinds of, I, I saw Summer Down, Susan, LOL, I'd like to know about it. Anyway, so that's another test for uh, creativity. That's called the alternate uses test. And this is a test of divergent creativity. Like what if, there's a million answers, anything, you could use the brick for anything. Kind of, it's like a weird bubble wrap thing, but it's like lined for cold things. And I built this like pouch so that when I reconstitute my food, it'll stay hot. Uh, write a poem, make cosplay armor. That's cool, you have to send a picture. Going outside to plant cedar bushes in a bedding space. So creative, creative. cook and bake. Well, that's, you have to share even, you have to share the cooking and the baking. Actually, my husband just shakes his head because he's the cook in our house, but I love to bake, but I don't follow the recipe. I change it up all the time. And he's like, oh, you're the one that should be cooking, not baking. So yeah, it'll all work out. Write a poem. Anybody else? What else have I got here? There's more than you in there. I know some of you aren't saying anything. If you're, if you're like over making dinner right now while you're listening to this webinar, that's pretty early for dinner, but come back and tell us what you're doing. Play a board game. I love it. Walk my 10 month old. Ooh, he's 100 pounds. Wow. That's a big one. Make goop. He walks me. Well, you can maybe find a creative way to go for a walk where you um, are both not being pulled around by each other. Making masks. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's great. Making signs. Fishing. Oh, yeah. I love that. And so meditative and mindful of fishing. Um, those are all horse ride. I love it. And with horse ride, you can creatively choose a different route or, you know, all kinds of different things you can do with a horse ride. I love it. Next exercise and making tiny Canadian flags. Oh, that's so cute. Knitting. Take your dog on a different walk. I love it. And with that, um, you know, continue to pop them into the chat. But um, I know that you are at the end of your time. I wanted to say congratulations to Susan for winning the award. Very well deserved from what I can tell. And thank you so much for letting me come and share my passion about engaging with our creativity, especially, especially for those of us who are more analytical and didactic and trained to that there's a black and white. There can be a gray in some parts of life and it can be fantastic. So thank you so much. And I'm happy to take any questions if you're wanting to stay.